How's it going boys and girls? Welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to be fabricating a custom intake pipe. So I started welding stainless about a week ago and we've gone from absolutely cooking this metal to welding some decent dimes. You know they're not perfect but they're welds I am happy to show. Um, and yeah this is not going to be your average welding tutorial there are plenty of those on YouTube um, but what I will cover will hopefully get you started as a beginner through to welding up your first joint. I'm very fortunate to have people around me who actually know how to weld, some who actually do it professionally. So what I'm sharing is just the knowledge which has been taught to me. Uh, and at the same time, I am still learning. So if you have any feedback or if you have any questions, just hit up that comment section. The machine I'm using is this Unimig Razor Weld 200 AC-DC Pulse. Um, this machine does high frequency AC and DC and also has a really good pulse function, which I've been using. Um, yeah, this is also the same machine I learned to weld aluminium with. The only downside with this machine is that it runs off a 15 amp uh, outlet. So 15 amp is like that. So I had to get an electrician in to fit that circuit. For those looking for a cheaper machine to start, this is my first welder, the SIG Weld WeldSkill 185. Um, it is a DC welder and with a few optional extras, it'll also TIG steel pretty well. Um, it just can't TIG aluminium. To start welding stainless, you'll also need pure argon gas. So this is a D-sized bottle that I bought from Sydney Tools. But you actually don't need to buy that bottle outright. You can actually rent your bottle, which is what I've done with my, you know, I use this for MIG welding. I've got argon mix there, which is also a D-sized cylinder. And you can get that, you can rent that from Bunnings. So yeah, quick tip, if this is just a hobby for you, there's no real need to buy the cylinder. You can actually rent the cylinder and give them a deposit. And then once you return the bottle, you get your deposit back. And if you're planning on purging your parts, which you should, uh, you'll also need a dual argon regulator. Um, this side I've got for purge gas and this side is shielding gas for the tungsten. The plan for this video is to practice my welding and we're gonna do that by fabricating a custom intake for my Civic, just for a bit of fun. We're gonna be making this from a straight piece of three inch, three or four stainless steel tube. I believe the wall thickness is 1.6 millimeters. Um, and we're also going to be making our pie cuts instead of buying the mandrel bends just to get that welding practice in. So I've already made my pie cuts and ideally you want to do this with a bandsaw, uh, but I don't have one and I've made do with this general purpose tool. This is an Azito metal cutoff saw and got that from Bunnings. On the tube, I drew a straight line with a piece of aluminum angle on both sides so that when we make our cuts, we simply flip the tube over uh, rather than adjusting the machine every time. I set the cut angle to seven and a half degrees, which gives us a total transition angle of 15 degrees with both sides cut. So now I've got all the cuts, we're gonna prep and get them ready and clean for welding. Um, if there's one thing which has been taught to me and something that I've learned along the way, just like most things, prep takes the most time um, and it's the key to a good looking and strong weld. So I'm gonna demonstrate everything I do with this pie cut. Uh, we're going to start by deburring the edges with a carbide bit. Um, so I've got this on a Milwaukee die grinder. This is just a carbide bit and I'm going to go around and remove the burrs off this tube. So now I've deburred the inside edges. I'm going to pop this onto a bench sander to make sure the cut is nice and flat. Um, and it'll also help to smooth down and deburr the outside edge of my pie cut. And already our pie cut is looking much better. The inside edges nice and smooth, the surface is nice and flat. So next I'm going to get my scotch bright, and what we're going to be doing is just cleaning it up and you're going to want to give it a really good rub to remove any oxidation off the surface of the steel. All right, here we go. So next grab yourself a clean rag and some acetone. So I just use acetone from Bunnings. Just a liberal amount. All 
All right, so it is nice and clean. And the last thing we're gonna do, which is kind of optional, but I think it's good practice. Uh, we are gonna finish it off with the propane torch just to burn off anything left over which could potentially contaminate the weld. Okay, so these are all my pie cuts and also that straight tube um, off camera. I've been back and forth between the car, just making sure all the cuts are in the right position and I've got the right angles. And now we're ready to tack weld this thing together. Just with the fit up, I've gone ahead and numbered all of these pieces and also just lines to know where to tack weld. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if there's a better way of doing it. I thought about using tape, um, but at the same time, you just want to keep it as clean as possible. Um, but if there is a better way to do this rather than using numbers and, you know, a permanent marker, let me know. Um, but I've done this before on this piece. Uh, where's this piece? Um, I didn't have any issues. Turn my gas on. Turn my gas on. All right. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys my settings for tack welding. They're kind of similar to what I do for pulsing, um, but to be honest, I'm not sure if these are the right settings. They just work for me. So I'm on straight DC amps, 2T for the remote because I'm using a foot pedal. So 85 amps is my peak amperage when my foot pedal is at 100% down. Um, next we got, uh, we got down slope, so zero seconds. Finishing amp, five amps. Uh, and my post flow gas is 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds is really not much, but when we're doing the final weld, uh, we're definitely gonna bump that up to like four or five seconds. All right, tungsten electrode, 2.4 millimeters. Pre-flow gas, three seconds. Starting amp, five amps. No upslope, and back to our 85 amp peak amperage. I don't know what gas flow I've set it to, uh, but I will definitely put that up on the screen. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the torch setup. Uh, to be honest, um, yeah, there are a lot of good videos on YouTube. I am using the FUPA 12 uh, with these pink electrodes from Oz Welding Supplies. Um, I think you can also use red if they are more readily available. Just making sure your tungsten and your parts are really clean. So I clean my tungsten with um, acetone as well. And also making sure that your gas filter is not clogged. So I originally had issues with my gas filter. Um, I was welding a bit too close and contaminating that tungsten, uh, which caused it to block. So just making sure that you've got a nice and clean torch as well. Um, and your weld should look nice and pretty. All right, let's get this tack welded together. All right, so tack welds. This is something which I've actually really struggled with in the past, um, but recently I've kind of gotten the hang of it and to be honest with you, it's actually quite simple. A bit of it was partly to do with the machine settings, but also partly to do with my technique. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys uh, how I usually do it. Generally, I'll bring my tungsten and sometimes I even touch the joint. I'll just rest it inside the joint and then lift it up by two mils. Um, and then again, my foot pedal, I give it about 0.2 of a second. It's really not much. And that's enough to give yourself a really small tack weld. So with tack weld placement, I'm kind of distancing them about one welding finger width apart. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that, it, it's quite short, but I, I do feel more comfortable with welding uh, shorter distances. I am doing more passes, but I just find myself uh, doing straighter lines when I'm going for short distances. Hopefully that helps you guys with tack welding. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and tack weld the rest of it together.
Alrighty, got the intake pipe all tack welded together. What I've done as well is I've lined up the tack welds so it kind of looks a bit more uniform when I do the passes and, and line them up together. Uh, I want it looking kind of like a lobster like finish. Um, but yeah, pretty happy how it turned out. On reflection, I did not prep this joint very well. The one on the end here, uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't realize, but the surface isn't as flat as I thought. And I ended up blowing a hole, well, two small holes. So what I'm gonna have to do tomorrow is just add a bit of filler. Um, should be no biggie. But yeah, it's coming along really nicely and I will see you guys tomorrow. So today we're gonna finish off welding this intake pipe. Um, but before I go ahead and do that, I just wanted to chat to you guys about two things. The method of welding that I'm using to weld this up um, and also purge gas. Now, I'm gonna be doing what's called fusion welding or autogenous welding, depending on what term you like to use, which means we're not gonna be adding any filler material to this unless it's necessary. We're gonna be using the base material, what's already on the pipe, and reshaping that metal to form um, a new bond to fill that join. A lot of people are gonna argue that fusion welding just isn't strong, um, but I just don't think that's correct. I think if you are purging your materials and you've got a really nice and clean fit up, um, I do think you can actually form quite a strong, um, strong enough uh, bond. Um, you know, this is an intake pipe. I do plan on doing the exhaust on the RX-7 and also the 79, so stay tuned for further welding videos and I will be definitely using filler material for that. Um, but for the purposes of an intake pipe, this is gonna be enough. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I purge um, this pipe and um, then I'll show you guys the machine settings. All right, so this is a piece of aluminum foil. Um, I got like $4 worth from Coles and just scrunch it up into a ball and we're gonna insert this into uh, the end of the pipe, just like that. So got a decent fit, um, but just to make sure, you know, I've burnt a hole there in the past, I'm add some of this um, 3M tape. Let me show you guys actually, I've got another roll here. So this is um, called high temperature flu tape from 3M um, and I've been using that to seal up some of the joints. Just add a piece here. And I'll go ahead and add another piece. Just there. So this hose comes from the other side of my argon regulator. So I'm just gonna simply plug it in there, just like that. Yep. Um, and on the other end, I'm gonna form a cap with that tape again. With that capped off, I'm gonna poke a few holes just with some filler rod. Just to allow some of that gas to escape. There we go. So that's my purge setup. Got the gas coming through this hose into the pipe here and out through those little holes. I'm gonna set my argon gas flow to 15 litres. I'm going to start purging that for a few minutes. Uh, 15 litres per minute right there. And you should be able to feel just a bit of gas coming out. So I'm going to let that run for a few minutes and let's have a look at the machine settings. All right, so machine settings. Um, these are not my settings. I've actually got these off YouTube and I found them really good. Um, so we're going to change the machine over to DC pulse. You can use straight DC amps, um, but I prefer using the pulse method um, to control my heat. Um, yeah, so peak amp, uh, 85 amps. Uh, the base amp is 10 amps, 1.4 hertz, 45% duty cycle, uh, zero second down slope, finishing amp 5 amps, um, and I'll bump that up to five seconds post flow. Uh, tungsten 2.4 millimeters, so pre-flow three seconds, base amp bridge 10 amps. Yep, so back to that. All right, let's get to welding.
All right, so I've done top and bottom side of each join. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd stop uh, because the metal is getting a bit warm. I think, you know, with a bit more experience, you can probably end up turning the amperage down um, and keep welding. Uh, but I'm just going to take a break and um, yeah, the welds are looking pretty good. You can actually see when it starts to get hot because the heat affected zone starts to, you know, increase in diameter. Um, we can see that compared to this side. Something I noticed too before I was talking about uh, the joint with a bad fit up. That's it over there. Um, I did end up fuse welding that, but I reckon once I get down to that part, I might have to add some filler. Otherwise, it's looking good. I'm gonna give it a rest um, and we'll get back to it soon. All right, so this is the fourth and hopefully final pass we do. Uh, and we should have this intake pipe all welded up. Um, and hopefully I've got enough gas because, you know, I'm running quite low. Something I've found, um, which I'm kind of struggling with, is actually hiding the stop and starts because we're doing quite short passes, um, but we're doing a lot of them. You can definitely tell where I've stopped and started. What I've been trying to do is actually start on the previous time, roll backwards, and then continue the welding um, down the pipe. Um, it hasn't really worked very well. You can kind of see in some spots, um, you know, where the stopping starts have been. Uh, but, you know, if you guys have any feedback, uh, I'd really appreciate that. So yeah, let's finish this intake off. Okay, so this intake pipe is complete. For a first time attempt, I wouldn't say I'm stoked, but I'm happy with it. Um, not as neat as I thought it would look. I definitely wanted these welds to be a bit more uniform, a bit straighter, but a lot of that's to do with the stop and starts, which I was struggling with. The badly prep join uh, actually wasn't too bad. I didn't actually need to add any filler um, because when I was fusing the two metals together, it was actually pulling the joint closer. Uh, but I did have to add a little bit of filler, whereabouts is it, on one spot. I actually blew a hole at one of the tacks, so I had to add some filler just to fill it up. So as you can see with fusion welding, there really isn't much penetration, um, but I still found a few spots of sugaring. But I think it's actually because I didn't have enough purge gas. I actually had to reduce the purge gas flow, otherwise I wouldn't have had enough gas to finish the pipe. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial on how to TIG weld stainless steel as a beginner and I also hope it sets the tone for a few upcoming videos I've got planned for the RX-7. I'm going to kick that off with fabricating a custom turbo back exhaust and I'm really keen to see how it sounds. Um, anyways, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.